the fertility center of Las Vegas. It is conceivable. Hello, my name is Dr. Bruce Shapiro, and I'd like to welcome you to the Fertility Center of Las Vegas. What I'd like to do first is talk about the reproductive system itself. I want to talk about how things need to work in order to get pregnant, what things can go wrong, and what types of things we can do to determine what's working and what isn't working. The first thing that I want to do is look at this model of the reproductive system. This is the vagina. This is the cervix, which is the portion of the uterus that projects into the vagina. This is the uterus. These are the tubes. And then these are the ovaries. So in order to get pregnant, an adequate amount of sperm have to be placed in the vagina. The sperm swim through the cervix, up into the uterus, and then into the fallopian tubes. At the same time, an egg has to be released by the ovary, picked up by the end of the tube, and then propelled into the tubal lumen where fertilization occurs. The fertilized egg then begins to develop and is transported by the tube back into the uterus for implantation. So here are potential pitfalls to getting pregnant. First, there have to be enough sperm placed in the vagina. If there aren't enough sperm placed in the vagina, there won't be enough sperm to meet the egg after it's picked up by the tube in the distal portion of that tube. So we want to make sure there's enough sperm. What we want to do is get a sperm count. And a sperm count is where we actually count the number of sperm, the number of moving sperm, and the number of sperm that actually appear normal. Any one of these parameters, if not in normal amounts, can result in infertility. The next thing that I want to do is determine whether or not there's anything inside the uterus that could prevent the embryo from attaching and implanting into the lining. If there is something inside the lining of the uterus that could prevent implantation, like polyps or fibroids, then implantation may be inhibited. The way that we determine that is to put a little water into the uterus at the same time that we do an ultrasound. In this way, we'll be able to determine if there's anything projecting into the cavity that could prevent a physical barrier to implantation of the embryo. So we want to find out if any of those things are present because they're all fixable. Think of it as a flower bed where you throw seeds on the flower bed. The seeds that land on any rocks in the flower bed won't be able to touch the soil and germinate and it's the same thing with the uterine cavity. The next test that I want to do is send it to the radiologist, and the radiologist is going to put dye through the tubes and do an x-ray at the same time. In this manner, the radiologist will be able to determine if the tubes are open, or patent as we call it. If the tubes aren't open, then the sperm and the egg can't meet, and the egg can't get fertilized, and it can't undergo subsequent development, and transport back into the uterine cavity. The next thing that I want to do is look at the ovarian reserve. And what we're interested in is if there are sufficient amount of eggs and whether or not they're of sufficient quality. And the way we do that is really twofold. The first thing that we want to do is determine what the FSH level, or follicle stimulating hormone level is, on the third day of your menstrual cycle. The follicle stimulating hormone level should be very low on the third day. And when we compare it to the normal tables, we can determine whether or not your pituitary gland has to work extra hard or not to make eggs. The next thing that I want to do is count the number of eggs that you recruit each cycle from the total ovarian pool of eggs for development in any one particular cycle. And what we do is call an antral follicle count. What we measure are the very small follicles or little cysts in the ovary that are precursors to egg formation that are present in the early part of the menstrual cycle. These are small little cysts measuring about two to eight millimeters in diameter and they're easily identified on the ultrasound. And we're gonna get a count. You'll be right there and you'll know exactly what the count is as soon as we do. And in this way, we're going to try to determine what your ovarian reserve is. As you know, in women, they're born with a finite number of eggs. And as time goes on, these eggs are depleted in number, and the ones remaining oftentimes are of less quality. We want to see where you are specifically in that, in that cascade of events that ultimately leads to menopause. Now, for most women, um, 
menopause doesn't occur until well after the age of 40. The problem, however, with many women is, is that well before menopause, the number and the quality of the eggs is insufficient to be able to support a pregnancy. We want to see if you're one of those women. Now with all of these tests, we're going to sit down and we're going to determine for you what's working and what isn't working. Once we identify what isn't working, we're going to talk about what we can do to overcome those deficits so that we can make it much more likely that you're going to be able to conceive. Thank you. The Fertility Center of Las Vegas. It is conceivable.